morning in the Michael B. DeGroote Center for Learning and Discovery, one of the real jewels of the McMaster campus, named in honor of a history-making donor. And we're here to celebrate the construction kickoff of another building that fits pretty much the same description. L.R. Wilson Hall is, pretty, is named after our chancellor and the project's lead philanthropist, Dr. Linton Red Wilson. Before we hear from our speakers this morning, I'd like to acknowledge a number of our special guests for whom you'll hear more about as we go on through the program today. First, I'd like to welcome Brad Dugan, the Ontario Minister of Training, Colleges and University, and the Member of Provincial Parliament for the riding of Scarborough Centre. Cabinet is the MPP for the riding we're in right now. Ancaster, Dundas, Flamborough, Westdale, longest name riding, Ted McNeaton. <laughs> Ted, of course, is the Minister of Community and Social Services. Welcome to both of you. We're delighted to have you as very important partners in this project. Next, our Chancellor, McMaster's Chief Volunteer, Dr. Linton Red Wilson. He's a member of the class of 62. I'm going to give you a little bit of background. And he's the L.R. Wilson in L.R. Wilson Hall. Thank you for being here this morning, Red. <laughs> McMaster's President and Vice Chancellor, Dr. Patrick Bean, whom I'll introduce a little more in detail in a few moments. Patrick? in this special celebration. And here at McMaster, that means two faculties, our faculties of humanities and social sciences. So I'd like to very specially welcome Ken Kirchhain, the acting dean of the faculty of humanities, and Charlotte Yates, the dean of our faculty of social sciences, two very important leaders to this project. Projects, the students were a critical component in this project, speaking regularly about the importance of this new facility to our campus. And David's going to speak to you a little bit more about that this morning. Delighted to see President Emeritus Peter George with us, and a range of our academic leaders, members of faculty in social sciences, humanities, and across campus, people who will really benefit from using this facility when it's open in really. September 2015 for students to enjoy the classes. Our first speaker is Dr. Patrick Dean, who's been McMaster's President and Vice Chancellor since July of 2010. He's also a professor of the Department of English and Cultural Studies. So in the future, if he wants to fit some teaching into his presidential duties, L.R. Wilson Hall would likely be where that happens. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dr. Patrick Dean. Well, I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to be here on this occasion. As an unrepentant humanist, this is an occasion I've been looking forward to, uh, and it's, it's really wonderful to anticipate the building of this facility and what it will mean in terms of the experience of our students and our faculty in the years to come, and overall what it will mean for the whole university as the humanities and social sciences uh, are able to make the most of their potential uh, and to have the appropriate effect on the way in which the institution understands itself and its mission. So many thanks, Mary. Uh, this is a, a morning that is going to focus, I think rightly, on the two indispensable partners who brought us here today. Uh, our lead investors, Red Wilson and the province of Ontario. But I thought I, I would begin my remarks about L.R. Wilson Hall uh, by telling you a little bit about the kind of product of a liberal arts education that can make a great difference in the world. And I wanted to talk a little bit about John Michael. John earned his master's degree in philosophy here at McMaster in 1982. 
And if he were of a different generation of Mac students, L.R. Wilson Hall is exactly where he would have been and studied uh, as he developed his university experience. Dr. Mighton also holds a PhD in advanced mathematics and is one of the foremost math educators in the world, a visionary who has dedicated his life to unlocking the talent in children who struggle with learning, particularly in mathematics. But John is also a Governor General's award-winning playwright who prefaced his play, A Short History of Night, with a tremendous case for investment in the liberal arts. And this is what he writes. When people think about the future, they tend to imagine a world in which, for better or worse, everyone agrees. In dystopias, the agreement is imposed from above. In utopias, it is spontaneous and based on truth. But if the human mind is incapable of understanding the world in its entirety, then people may never entirely agree. Perhaps we should start, says John Mighton, preparing for a future in which people don't agree, in which tolerance will have to be the chief virtue. The tolerance Mighton aspires to in these words depends ultimately on a number of complementary virtues, which are, of course, the stock in trade of the social sciences and humanities. Virtues like critical thinking, community engagement, creativity, adaptability, all, as I say, strengths of a liberal arts education, particularly at this, one of the world's top 100 universities. The capacity and features of L.R. Wilson Hall will advance McMaster's approach to teaching and learning in the faculties of humanities and social sciences, and in the process, it will help us to proliferate those virtues. L.R. Wilson Hall, which will also house our Indigenous Studies program, will feature a 400-seat lecture theater, two 100-seat classrooms, and a number of smaller learning spaces designed to facilitate McMaster's signature learning approaches, problem-based learning and inquiry. The building will also house research centers, including the Wilson Institute for Canadian History and the Gilbrea Center for Health and Aging. And much to the delight of our playwriting alumni, L.R. Wilson Hall will also be home to new performing arts spaces, including a 350-seat concert hall and a, block, a black box theater that can be reconfigured for a variety of music, dance, and spoken word productions. Wilson Hall will also be tremendously respectful of the environment through the achievement of LEED certification, and it will be respectful of the building's location on our campus and in our neighborhood. The gardens, building materials, and the green roof will all enhance the human environment of the L.R. Wilson Hall while reducing its ecological footprint. We're also keenly aware that this building's location brings with it the responsibility of being a gateway between the campus and our neighbors. And both the design and the usage plans by L.R. Wilson Hall take that mission to heart. Now, as you know, two Keystone investors have made this project a reality. The province of Ontario contributed $45.5 million and the building is named in honor of our lead donor and our chancellor, as you've heard, Linton Red Wilson, who contributed 10 million. So on behalf of my colleagues on the university senior team, particularly the acting dean of humanities, Ken Cruikshank and Charlotte Yates, the dean of social sciences, I want to thank ministers Duguid and McMeekin, along with their colleagues in cabinet for their leadership and support. Thank you very much. has worked diligently and over a long time to cultivate a relationship with the province of Ontario that is a true partnership. So it's immensely rewarding to see key leaders like Ministers McMeekin and Duguid responding so decisively to the priorities of our university, of our students, and of our community. 
investing in Wilson Hall is a visionary decision, one that will reap great, great benefits, not just for the university, but for our province and the world beyond. And finally, I would like to thank our Chancellor for his leadership, both philanthropic and moral, as McMaster has prepared to make the single largest investment in the liberal arts in our history. Red's personal belief in this project has helped to inspire a reinvigoration of our approach to the liberal arts. In fact, I'd like to conclude my, my comments today, Red, by quoting you from the announcement of your gift in October 2007. This is from our Chancellor. I believe that educated people should be able to interact with each other within a context that includes a shared understanding of who we are as human beings, where we as nations and communities have come from, and the forces and events that have combined to make the world we live in what it is today. L.R. Wilson Hall will help McMaster ensure that our future students and our alumni are able to do exactly that. Thank you, Red. Thank you, Ministers. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, Patrick. Our next speaker is the MPP for McMaster's Home Riding, the Minister of Community and Social Services, a very proud McMaster graduate, and a leader who played a foundational role in this project. Please join me in welcoming Minister Ted McEwen. Well, thanks uh, very much, uh, Mary. Is it ever good to be home again? I got to tell you, it's uh, always wonderful to come back onto campus, uh, particularly when I can bring a colleague with me. You know, this is, I think, the third time in the last week uh, Minister Goodwood has been in town with good news. So. Thanks for coming back, for it. Uh, and thank you, Mary. Um, Mr. President, Mr. Chancellor, Dr. Wilson, President Campbell, where is uh, David here? Esteemed uh, educators, uh, fellow alumnus and potential alumnus, uh, I'm really pleased to be here. Um, I guess I had a bird's eye view as this project unfolded. I was the parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Training Colleges and Universities at the time. Now, if you've ever wondered how much influence an engaged community can have, you need to look no further than the sporting and the announcement uh, and the saw turning that we're doing uh, uh, today. The engagement of McMaster students, I just want to take a minute to, to express this. Uh, do you know we received 483 emails and letters from students, McMaster students, with no form letters, all talking about the importance of, uh, of this new humanities uh, building and uh, facility uh, to their education. And as a result, uh, I don't know if you know this, uh, Mr. President, but uh, uh, in that budget year, the only capital project that was approved outside of the science, engineering, and medical side, the only humanities capital project, was right here at McMaster University. So, uh, and appropriately so. Appropriately so, given this is the far and away the best university in the province. <laughs> I know, you know. <laughs> but, I, but I want to emphasize it was the students, I mean, it's everybody. You know, partnerships about doing together what you, you can't achieve in part. And it worked for Dr. Wilson's, uh, you know, lead gift uh, that made it so much easier. But it was the students who put the, uh, the heat, so to speak, on the problems to, to come through. So, uh, any students wondering about student engagement and the importance of student engagement, Please reflect on that. I see you there, Spencer, so I really want to do that. Um, anyhow, um, 
So get involved. Don't ever hesitate to get involved. And uh, uh, the uh, edifice that will be going up here, uh, suitably named, uh, will be uh, forever a monument to uh, student engagement, and community engagement on this campus. Anyhow, enough of that. It's time for me to introduce a really good friend and colleague. And uh, I'm very glad. Uh, I was very glad when I heard that uh, Brad Duguid was going to be named the Minister of Training Colleges and, and Universities uh, because, as you know, the university system is very close to my heart as it is to his. And I knew with Brad it would be in very, very good hands. And it is. Um, Brad Duguid got his political feet wet well, in the Don Valley. No, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> as a, two days ago, as a city councillor, uh, just as I did. And he stood out in that role as someone who worked tirelessly to serve his community and make it better. He served with distinction in a number of provincial portfolios where his achievements including creating jobs, advancing clean energy, and launching an innovative uh, program for Aboriginal youth, which he describes as the single most important thing he's done in uh, provincial politics. I heard you correctly last week, uh, that uses participation in sports to teach life skills. I am incredibly proud to have him as a colleague, to count him as a friend, and uh, today an, an avid and, uh, and a great advocate for the uh, best university in the province, uh, our beloved McMaster University. Welcome. And you're right, this is the second or third time I've been in Ted's territory in the last week and a half or so. And I'm spending more time in Ted's writing than I am my own these days. Uh, and what that does, I, I think it speaks to uh, Ted's advocacy on behalf of, of this university, McMaster, on behalf of this entire region. And when he talks about those 483, 483 letters he received from, uh, from David's uh, student colleagues, uh, he really, he really drove this at Queen's Park. Uh, this wouldn't have happened without Ted McBeacon's advocacy there. So I would like you to give him a round of applause because we wouldn't be here today. And Chancellor Wilson, we wouldn't be here today without Chancellor Wilson either. Now, Ted and I can make these announcements. $45 million announcement is a nice announcement. It's, uh, it's generous on behalf of the province. But that doesn't come out of Ted and I's pocket. That comes out of your pockets collectively. Uh, what uh, Chancellor Wilson's contribution is, that's, an, that's money that comes out of his and his family's pockets. That's an incredibly generous contribution, Chancellor. I want on behalf of all of us here and all of us across the province, thank you for your leadership in education and thank you so much today for your generosity. Please give the Chancellor a round of applause. from 1962. Well, well, my generation thinks of 1962, and here, here's all the stories about it. Maybe, David, you, you hear stories about my generation, but the 60s kind of have some stories to them that I think are unlike any other decade. It's just amazing you're still here with us when we hear about some of those stories, Chancellor. I, not to say you engaged in any of those, those types of things. You know, the Beatles had just come out when you think about it. John F. Kennedy was still President of the United States in 1962. And a, and a very important thing happened in July of 62. This Minister of Training Colleges and Universities was born. So, uh, not to age you, Chancellor, but... Uh, and then Ted McMeekin was yet to come, of course. Uh, years later, Ted would come along. But it is so, I'm so happy to be here. And I, I want to say something about Patrick Dean as well. He is, a, he is a visionary leader in education in this province, leading one of the, and Ted is absolutely right, leading one of the most cutting edge universities in our system. The McMaster story is a huge Ontario global success story. And this university has come from a university that started many years ago as sort of an up and comer 
that's now rising to become a global leader in research and cutting edge uh, thinking and education uh, types of, uh, of, of techniques that are being used here and some for the first time Mary was telling me in North America this is an institution that each and every one of you should be very very proud to be part of and an institution that's really cutting it cutting edge globally and make, making Ontario very very proud so Ted you're absolutely right I, I'm thrilled to be here and Patrick your leadership is so so important and boy is it ever nice to listen to him speak he's just got such a a beautiful voice. He sounds so intelligent when he speaks. I wish I could sound the same way, Patrick. So give Patrick and his team a round of applause. Again. for three minutes and I haven't even gotten started yet so I better I better get into it. Alyssa Hall is going to be a phenomenal opportunity here for, for students. I think half of the students on this campus will at some point or another gain great access and be part of that building. And it's not just the building, it's what's going to happen within it that's so, so important. Forget about my notes and forget about all the details of this. At the end of the day, when I come here, what I think of is there are going to be students walking through the halls of that building that are going to make cutting edge contributions to not only Ontario, but the world in terms of some of the work that they're going to be doing in there uh, and go on to create uh, incredibly important opportunities for our economy here in this province of Ontario. And to me, that's what it's all about. That's why my job as Minister of Training Colleges and Universities is so exciting, because what we're building here is the future economy of the province of Ontario in a very challenging economic time, but one that has great opportunities because those jurisdictions that are at the cutting edge of that next generation economy will the ones that will succeed the most. And McMaster is helping us lead the way in doing that. So I'm not going to say much more other than say how excited I am to be here, how excited it will be when that building is done, and then how exciting it will be to see the results of that as more and more McMaster students go on to change the province, to change the world, and contribute to our, our economy here in the province of Ontario. David, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for the leadership of your students. The fact that you you and your students were so involved in this, this campaign really is inspiring to each and every one of us. And I think that more than anything else speaks to what this, this project is going to bring. This is an investment of $45 million that I am sure we will get returns 30, 20, 40 fold. I, I'm absolutely positive that this will be an investment that's well worth the, uh, the, the time and, and dollars that Ted has convinced us uh, to invest here in McMaster. So thank you all so much for your leadership. Thank you for being here. And uh, David, thank you for your leadership on behalf of the students of this great facility. Thank you. I hope you feel our thanks this morning in this room with this great turnout. It's a real privilege to have you as such great provincial partners and to see the province being so well represented this morning. Now our final speaker is the president of the McMaster Students Union and you've heard that students were fundamental to this project. David, in fact, is a recent graduate from the university's well-known arts and science program where he had a strong academic focus in areas of the liberal arts and he's really been involved as an active student leader in many areas, including student theater. So might be interested to get up on stage in this new performing arts theater. Please join me in welcoming David Campbell. Well, thank you, Mary. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm, I might miss out on the theater, but I'm going to be looking forward to coming back and watching people on it. So. Uh, to Ministers Dugan and McMeekin, to President Dean, to Chancellor Wilson, um, as well as to students, professors, staff, and guests, it's not always that we get this sort of opportunity, a real opportunity to stop and um, reflect on the work that we've all done. Wilson Hall is going to enhance the ways McMaster delivers almost every aspect of the student experience. And it could not have happened without the contributions of just about everyone in this room. 
from the incredible gift of Chancellor Wilson to the unique and ambitious gift of um, the contribution from our province to the collaboration and advocacy efforts of the university and finally if I can don my student hat again for a moment to the, um, to the incredible letter writing campaign and engagement of hundreds of students um, and there's been a lot of credit given to the students now for that but I think it's also important that a lot of those students writing those letters have already moved on. Um, a lot of those who were there at the time will have moved on by the time the building it was here, but it was really an investment of current students um, in a belief in improving the student experience for future students. And I think, I think that's important. Um, so as a result, we'll have a building which, as I said, I must admit makes me a little jealous of future McMaster students. They'll have classes in more spacious and better equipped classrooms. They'll get to learn in spaces designed specifically for approaches like inquiry. They'll get to pursue theater and music in a fantastic and innovative performing arts space. And as was pointed out, these benefits are not extended just to liberal arts students. Wilson Hall will be important to more than just students in the humanities and social sciences. At any given time, more than half of McMaster students, regardless of faculty, are taking at least one liberal arts course. Add to that the predominance of part-time students in those two faculties, and the natural community connections of things like music and drama. And this is one of the most important things McMaster could do to enhance the learning experience. So on behalf of McMaster students, I want to thank our provincial government and our chancellor um, for making all of this possible. Students at McMaster will have a bright future to look forward to as a result. Thank you. absolutely fine example of student leadership and student engagement at this university. One person I did want to mention who is a former colleague of yours is Joe Finkel, <clears throat> who helped in that, uh, lead that letter writing campaign. And we had hoped Joe could join us today. He's busy in Ottawa, but along with many others, Ted, as you know, he played a fundamental role, and I think we should acknowledge that leadership today as well, because as you mentioned, many, many people were involved with that. So that actually concludes the formal part of our remarks this morning. I'd like to really thank all of our speakers and special guests for being here. And as we wrap up in the atrium here this morning, I'd like to encourage you to stay and mingle and chat about the exciting opportunities with this new building. You'll see around the room and some of the pictures outside, some of the renderings of the new building. We've got many of the members of the planning committee here this morning, and I know they'd be delighted to answer any of the questions you have about what this great facility will do for our campus. For the group that's actually participating in the actual groundbreaking in a few minutes, we're going to ask you to gather over at the door in a few minutes. And once we get together, we'll walk over to the tent for that official groundbreaking. We really want to thank everybody for taking time out of their busy schedules to be here this morning for this very exciting celebration of a very, very fundamental step forward for mastering the liberal arts space. So thank you all for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day.